Good morning and welcome to the 9 a.m. draw here in the penultimate day of curling at the Nova Scotia, or the Canadian rather, Masters Curling Championship here in Kings County, Nova Scotia. To everybody in BC and Alberta that got up at some ungodly hour in the morning to watch their teams play, we welcome you as well. We have a great game this morning, as I mentioned, we do have BC and Alberta, both teams very much in the hunt for playoff spots and as are virtually everybody out here, actually, we do have the potential of six teams tied for first place after this draw, which would make the officials not very happy trying to sort that out, but we shall see what happens. A couple teams that have taken a very similar route to this point in the bond spiel. Um, Alberta started off this event rolling off with six straight victories before suffering a couple of three, actually, defeats. Toughest one probably last evening when they managed to come back from a, a heavy deficit to take a lead in the last end before giving up two and losing to Ontario. Team BC started off very, as I say, very similar. Five straight wins before losing a couple of games. Coming back with two solid victories, however, in the last two games. Pretty lopsided scores. So a little different, different perspective for both teams here today, but I expect to have a great game as we've seen all week long. The teams here at the Canadian Masters are so good very very good and a very evenly matched field so we're underway here with team bc having hammer in the first end skip ed luke which of alberta asked for a tight guard on that first shot and it's really a good shot two inches or so in front of the the rings bc not going to be able to remove that one we'll now play the corner guard that's nice to see too you always like to see the first end action heating up Lead Wayne Sato for Team BC. Ice, as we mentioned before, has been terrific at both clubs all week long, and teams really won't have any problem playing the game right from the get-go. Right off the bat, the ice is fast, has lots of curl. Ice maker Tony Sterling has, and his crews at both clubs have done just a remarkable job. We, aren't, we didn't bring any special rocks. These are their own club stones. I haven't heard any issue with rocks. Speed has been good. Curl has been good. Curlers are generally pretty happy. So Lukowicz now asking Alberta Lee Gord Dewar to play the in-turn draw. Out-turn draw. I apologize. Look, Gord's a lefty. So it'll be Gord's out-turn. Intensity level out here this morning is going to be pretty high, I would think. It was interesting in the introductions just prior to us coming on the air that everybody seemed a little loosey-goosey and all that, but I think as the game starts, you're going to see everybody ramp it up a little bit. A lot on the line here. If you don't make the playoffs in this, in this competition, your week is over. You just get to hang out and watch games and attend a banquet tomorrow night, which would be pretty special. And enjoy the Kings County hospitality, which is not a bad thing, but I'm sure you'd much rather be out here playing. So Sato now will ask to play the intern, basically a freeze to the rock that they just threw in the, Alberta just threw in the top of the eight foot, and a great shot it was by Gord Dewar. So he was on, this one looks pretty good. They can hold it. Just rubs the guard, but still a good shot, good spot for the BC squad. Alberta now will try to remove the blue stone. Maybe try to bump the red into the into the rings behind the corner guard. Red Lukovic indicating the weight call. I don't know the signals that the uh, team Alberta uses, but by the ice, I would just say it's just a control weight type hit. Second stone for Team BC is Don Higher. No turn, pretty firm takeout. Should be good. Uh, terrific shot, moving the stone, no damage to their own in behind it. Good start for the Alberta squad. Let's give up Team BC, Keith Switzer will now ask Ben Nishi to open things up a little bit. It's getting a little bit messy here. Rocks in front. Need to remove a couple of Alberta stones. On its way. 
This one looks pretty good. Should get rid of a couple. Maybe might get the one in the back. Oh, just a little bit unlucky there. Just to hit it right on the nose. Worst thing on that one is it, it almost staggered the front guards, but I think there's still room to make that run back if you decide to play that. Better play pretty aggressive style. Here in the first in. Oh, now he's going to throw the guard. First indicator, maybe the straight come around. or come right around to the button. Not a lot of room to work with in there, but... Switching sides now, going to the out turn. As I mentioned, these teams have been here all week. They have gone back and forth between the two clubs, but ice very similar to both clubs, and I, I don't think there'll be any problem with picking up the ice conditions and reading the ice as we as we say here in the, uh, in the curling world. It's just cleaning, really. A little tap. Not exactly what Don would have been looking on that, looking for on that one. Just, just moved it far enough to... Possibly be a problem for Alberta. BC now looking at still opening this up. I thought they might play the little angle run back on that one, but they're more concerned about these guards out front right now than they are the Rockets in the eight foot. So Nishi with his second shot here in the first end. Trying to angle this, trying to hit this a little bit thin and maybe make the Triple would have been nice. Really, really close. They roll it behind the corner guard. A little unlucky there, but very good shot. You can tell the front's opened up. There's uh, all kinds of room now to be able to get in and, and score a point on your last one if you end up in a little bit of trouble. Those that are wondering about Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, Steve Ogden lost last night in a tough game in the next round to, to um, Eugene Ritzik of Saskatchewan. And they sit at five and four, and I have no idea yet if they are going to be able to make the playoffs or not. It, 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 they will need a lot of help, let me put it that way. First of all, they have to win their game, and then they need a lot of magic to happen out here in all these other games. And I'm not sure. I tried to figure it out this morning, but the, it's just too tight to, to know. And on top of that is that the tiebreakers, if there's more than one, two teams tied, will probably come down to last shot, draw to the buttons, distance from the button, and all that sort of thing. And don't have that information, so that'll be up to the officials to sort out when we're done. But for starters, they do need to win to have any opportunity, so they'll just go out and try to do that and let somebody else figure out at the end if they're in or out. So PC now talking about what to do with this one. I don't think that you can make the, the hit on it directly. You may be able to make the run back, as is indicated here by Skip Switzer. And that's what they'll play here. Expect to see a little bit of weight on this one. Well, maybe not. Maybe they're just going to go with just a regular takeout weight. It's probably pretty close. Ah, very good shot there. By Victor Shimizu. Terrific shot. First hand, those aren't the easiest shots in the world, trying to match up the weight and the ice and all that kind of stuff to try to play a run back. A, what would have been probably a 10 foot or so run back is not, not easy, so good job by the BC squad on that one. Alberta now really not with much happening. We'll draw the open side here and try to uh, have BC maybe stay on their last shot blank attempt. Ben Lukowicz, who skips this team, but does throw third stones in the hack now. Well, I guess I was wrong. He's actually throwing the intern, so he's trying to tuck around the corner. Maybe try to get a force that way. This looks like pretty good weight. Needs to move a little bit more. Uh, good shot by Ed. First draw of the day. Perfect for weight. Didn't quite bury, but you got to be a little careful when you're coming around the opposition stone. And it's about, what, two-thirds visible. 
And on this ice, very accessible, no question. Well, Victor's second shot here in the first end. <coughs> Thought he was just a hair wide, and he might have been, judging by the fact they're trying to make it work its way over. Is he going to get there? He's almost. I didn't think it had a chance to, to get to the stone, but solid uh, directional sweeping there by Lee Wayne Sato. Almost got it out. So Alberta now with a definite chance to force BC to take one here in the first end. That would be the game plan coming in. You, you know, it's always nice to steal, but first priority usually in any kind of game that is close at all without hammer would be to force the opposition to take one and get the hammer back and, and try to work it from there. Fill you in on the other games across the board here in a few minutes once we get maybe to the first end break and tell you who's playing who and what games have any impact on what happens here as far as playoff possibilities. Alberta's first skip stones, or fourth stones. I don't know exactly how you're supposed to say it now, but it doesn't really matter. Jim Walsh. Out turn draw, just trying to set up a force. And that's a good shot. You might see BC draw to this one. You would like that to have been maybe T-line or just above the T-line, just to be sure that the BC guys didn't decide to get a little aggressive and play the out turn freeze. And Tough to throw a perfect freeze, but if you ever could make it, you still might be, be able to get a two here in the first end. And no doubt you're going to have to draw on your next one, so it's a good practice shot. So Keith Switzer working his way down the sheet, and he'll play the out turn. I believe a freeze to the back, Redstone. White group here in the Crown Club this morning. 9 a.m. doesn't seem to be quite late enough for most of these guys, but I'm sure they'll liven her up here a little bit. Another half hour, an hour or so. Semifinals for this event go this afternoon at 2. Will be no TV coverage for that one. No broadcasting coverage. Rather, for that, we just, they're not playing on the sheet, so we have cameras, so we cannot cover that one. So Switzer with the draw looks pretty good. Sweepers look. Pretty comfortable with the speed. Working on a little bit of curling action here. and That's a terrific draw in the first end. Just a great freeze, great shot by Keith Switzer. Alberta can certainly remove it, but there's, there's a better than average chance that they'll remove it and remove everything. And if they do do that, then BC will have the opportunity to blank this end. So a very nice draw by the BC skip. The intern takeout on, on its way for Jim Walsh. Just cleaning a little bit, just trying to pick this one out. And he will do that successfully. Very good shot by Jim Walsh. Woke up. A few of the crowd members woke up after that one. So BC with the very same shot here. Just play the same shot you just played and take your point. Don't have any choice at this point. Key 
shouldn't have too much trouble with this one after throwing it on his first shot. Looks a little bit lighter out of his hand to me, but sweepers aren't in any big panic, so I think it's probably pretty close. Maybe they needed to be in a little bit more of a panic after all. I think he's come up short here. And Red will steal. Alberta will steal one in the first end. Take a one nothing lead after one end of play. And unfortunate there. I think the guys could have got that one there had they been able to pick up that speed a little bit earlier. And, and on a little harder. Good sweepers. Solid sweepers all the way through across the board on all these teams. But a little sweeping area there, I think. And steal a one, no big deal. First end, it's... Uh, Seven solid ends to go yet. So we will let everybody know that Foots Farmer Farm Market actually has helped us out this week and kept us supplied with bananas all week long for the curlers and spectators here at the Curling Club. And also the Wolf Bill Business Development Corporation has helped as well. And they've been funded directly by the Wolf Bill Businesses and works in part and they work in partnership with the town of Wolf Hill, Acadia University and business owners. We thank them for being bronze sponsors of this event and as well for providing all of the amazing flag display that's on that's going on at the Wolfville Curling Club. So thanks to the Wolfville Business Development Corporation and to Foots Farm Market for being part of this 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters and it's been a great week here in Annapolis Valley in Kings County. Others have enjoyed every bit of it. Alberta now looking just to throw a rock into the into the forefoot and we really want to be behind the T-line on this one, but certainly going to be. Might be even behind the back line here yet. Keith working it back there. Not quite going to get it out. Back 12 foot. I think you'll see him ignore that one. And sure enough, goes up to throw the corner guard. Can't really worry too much about rocks in that position in the house. As we said, we will update you a little bit here. We'll watch this rock, and then we'll tell you who else is playing and, and where they stand in the whole process. This one looks quite heavy. Might end up with a freeze, possibly, at the back here. Ice might have uh, sped up a little bit since the first end, but I'm not sure it would have been quite that much, but regardless, removes the stone. BC sits one. So on sheet one... We have Saskatchewan at 7-2. And, and scoring two in the first end against Newfoundland. Newfoundland, again, followed the same path as these two teams, but it just kind of went a little worse. They started with four wins and have since lost five in a row and are eliminated from any playoff possibilities. On sheet B, or sheet two rather, we have Nova Scotia at 5-4, and four, taking on Manitoba 6-3. And, and as we said, Nova Scotia will have to win to have any opportunity at the playoffs and probably need a little help along the way. So BC removes that stone, rolls to the other side of the 12-foot circle. And our final game on, on sheet four has Ontario at seven and two, playing Quebec at six and three, and Ontario's just scored one in the first end to take a one-nothing lead in that game. We'll keep you up to date on those as we go on. And as I say, it's quite a convoluted process trying to figure out who's going to get in the playoffs, depending on what happens. But usually when I'm at home and I'm watching the curling on TV and I'm hoping there's going to be tiebreakers, stuff like that, you can see extra games. We don't have tiebreakers here, but it usually sorts itself out anyways, and we don't have any. So then maybe that'll happen here. We'll end up at the end of this trial with four teams obviously in and four teams out, and nobody will get eliminated on the draw to the button stuff. So a corner guard goes up for, for BC. Look which... Play the peel in the corner. Certainly a defensive, defensive style of play, peeling the corner guard, but play with what you like to play. So it looks like a good shot here. Second stone, Don higher. Gets away from some strange or in the crowd. There's probably a lot of bad jokes with the name higher, I would imagine, possible. 
But a good shot. He's off to a good start. It's made three in a row. All things are good. BC now. Second stone, Ben Nishi. This one looks heavy as well. BC squad having a little trouble with draw weight here early. Want this one to stop really before it gets to the house, but it's not going to do that. Slides in. Alberta will look to remove that stone without hitting their own at the back of the house. Way, trying to go hard, make sure they don't jam it at the back. And no problem at all. Does roll out though. Not a big deal for Alberta. If it did stay, it would have been behind the T line, just provided another stone for BC to work with. Corner guard call again by Skip Switzer. I'm sure the guys are going to get this weight figured out real quick and be helpful for the skipper. Nishi with his second stone here in the second end. Still looks a little bit heavy to me. It is a little deceiving from up here in the second level, though. I tell you that, you'll probably hear me say it's heavy all day long, and it may not be always. He switched are trying to figure out exactly which side of the broom to sweep with there. Flipping it around one way, another way, and back the other way. These new heads, they all move all over the place sometimes, and if you get it the wrong way, it just can't make it work. Anyway, he didn't do any damage to the stone, and it's there for Lukowicz to try to remove it. Jim Walsh holding the broom for Ed Lukowicz. He's got it on the way. A little bit tight on the slide, set it back a little bit. Years of experience will teach you that you need to fix the odd delivery every now and then, and that one is a little correction there. Well, look which knows what to do with it. Gets it back online and removes the corner guard. Also remind everybody that we are covering one game from the women's championship pool action that's going on right now at the Wolfville Curling Club and our other feed. If you're looking to see what's going on over there, you can just switch channels for a little bit. Be sure to come back. We'd like to have you here, but and we will uh, we'll try to keep you a little bit up to date on what's going over there. I can do that with some of these magic devices here. Nova Scotia in the women's field, as I say, does have a chance to make the playoffs. I think if they win their game, they have a very better than average chance, although they do have five time teams tied for first place over there potentially as well. So it's quite a wild finish to the week here. Usually things sort themselves out a little bit before that. So Team BC... Got way too much sleep last night, obviously, because they just can't slow anything down here this morning. They should have stayed out maybe and had a couple other refreshments later. But they'll get it They'll get it sorted out. Let's slide that one in. Really, again, putting themselves in a position to maybe be forced to take one here in the second end. Lukovic would like to stay on this one. Sweeper's just cleaning. Front end just doing a little bit of... Housekeeping on this one, and now a little bit more, and they should be fine. And a very good shot for Lukowicz. That's been an amazing week here in the Kings County with the towns of Kentville and Wolfville and the village of New Minus all jumping in and supporting this event. Big time businesses and fans alike. Third stone victor, Shimizu. Shimizu, I think. Trying to play the hit as well. He'll probably may try to roll over towards the towards the other stone just to make it a little tougher to remove, and he does. So a solid shot there. Victor, good start. Really, other than the one I'd still call a sweeping error in the first end, both teams playing pretty solid, solid, pretty solid game so far, as we would expect. You're not. You have two teams at seven and two and six and three here in the Canadian Championship. You're not going to expect them to go out here and just miss a whole lot of shots. That's for sure. 
in a fairly open style so far as well. I don't know what these teams prefer, but I know the Alberta team went through a couple of games where they had a hard time scoring points, so they might have decided that we need to keep things a little simple, although they did last night score four in the seventh end to take a lead against Ontario, so solve the problem there, at least for one end. So Walsh now, his first stone in the second end. Good shot if it stays, will it stay? And no, he does slide out. So we have basically the same situation we had in the first end when Skip Switzer has to make a, a freeze to maybe manufacture a two here. And if he can throw a good shot, he, he may make it. First end, he was just maybe about a eight inches away from being absolutely perfect. And Jim Walsh removed it without too much difficulty, actually. So he'll try to be a little bit better on this one. Probably the tendency on this shot would be, or the, the safety net on this one, probably would be to be a touch heavy. You really don't want to be, you know, on the T-line, have, have Alberta remove it and force you to one here. So, or have, or have to take one anyways, yeah. So, Switzer now will play the out turn. His out turn. I think, or is he? Yeah. Out turn, freeze in the one at the back of the house. So Keith had great draw weight in the first end. We'll see how he gets along here. Delivers it. Nice clean release. Finding guys getting on this one a little earlier. Not going to take any chances this time. And they're going to have to go a little, I think. This looks pretty good. As so we can see this back stone. Needs to curl a little more. Couldn't really do too much about that. That's a good shot. Nice weight. Just didn't curl quite enough. And Alberta will look to remove that stone. They would love to remove this stone and stay. Force, force the BC squad to, to take one. Skip Walsh, fourth stone thrower Walsh, I should say, I guess. This one's on its way. Has to curl up a little bit to be able to stay. It's close. Trying to make sure it doesn't jam, and he will make this shot, no problem at all. So BC could probably play the double and roll out if you were desperate to, to not score, but um, it would be a very difficult shot and a pretty high risk of giving up one. So... Switzer will play the soft takeout by the look of the ice. Take his one and be pretty happy at 1-1 after two ends of play. Here at the 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters Curling Championships. With just a couple more games to go in this event. It's hard to believe it's almost over. You can imagine it's been a long week for a lot of the volunteers. I only arrived here on Wednesday afternoon or evening or something. And it feels like I've been here forever, so... Switzer with this one on the way. They gotta go hard on this. They gotta go really hard on this. I'm not sure he's gonna make contact here. And I don't know what happened to that, to be honest. It, it right out of his hand, was pretty much on the other side of the stone. And Alberta will steal two here in the second end, take a 3 nothing lead after two ends of play. Canadian Masters, it's... um. Really not quite sure what happened there. I don't know if he just kind of hung on a little bit and yanked it across or if, or if it just curled right away. I was actually a little bit surprised to see him play that shot. He'd, he'd thrown three draws in a row with pretty darn good weight, so I actually thought he'd just throw a draw weight down there and go from there. But Alberta does jump up to a 3 nothing lead. Let's see how BC reacts to that. Got seven wins this week, so I'm pretty sure they were probably down once or twice along the way. 
And it's very early in the game. Can't tell you on sheet two, Steve Ogden is playing a draw for three. Looks like it's pretty good coming into the house. And Ogden will, Ogden team Nova Scotia will pick up three in the second end, take a 3-2 lead after two ends of play against Manitoba in a game that they absolutely have to win to have any possibility of playoff, playoff play, I guess. Over on sheet one, Newfoundland came back with one point in the second end, trailed two to one after two ends against Saskatchewan and Ontario steals one in the second end against Quebec. And an early 2-0 lead in that one for Ontario. And Bell Alliant is certainly proud to be the official broadcaster for the 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters. Curling championships here from the Goose Cap and Wolfville Curling Clubs. In beautiful Kings County, Nova Scotia. Bell Alliant, there's more to love with fiber op. Talking to the guys in the booth, they're moving from here to badminton for a whole week, so the Canadian Masters badminton competitions are on in Halifax. Probably be a pretty exciting event as well. Used to like badminton as a kid. Not so sure I was all that good at it. I think when you're a couple sports a year are definitely beneficial to being taller in excluding sports like basketball, but badminton, I think, I was about four foot six, I think, when I was going through high school. It seemed always a little unfair. I had to hit the bird up to get it over the net. I just thought that was just a definite disadvantage. So BC throws up the corner guard. Alberta with one rock in the house, and they'll play a little freeze down to the one that they just threw. BC has to get a little bit aggressive here. You don't have to panic, but you do need to start to mount a little bit of offense, and they haven't really done that so far. They've basically, Keith with Switzer has basically been throwing last rocks with, with no rocks in play for BC. Behind the corner guard. Not a good spot for that rock, actually. BC now has an opportunity to come around the corner and use the red rock at the back of the eight foot for for backing. So not a not a good position for that stone to end up. Sato now with the intern draw. This is mentioned how much curl there is in this ice, and there is lots of curl. There's certainly still plenty of curl. It has gotten a little straighter as the week's gone on. This looks pretty good. They just need to get it back there. Got to go hard now. Line's really good. Can't quite get back there, but good shot. Just the same. Alberta will certainly make a play on it. Play on it or the corner guard. It could be either or here. The intern hit for Alberta. Second stone on higher. Just a tiny little bit wide to me. I don't think he's going to touch it. Might get his own. Well, he did touch it. I guess I was wrong on that. Moved it a little bit further behind the guard. A little bit fortunate though, he came pretty close to removing his own stone there. First miss of the game I think for higher, so not, uh, not too bad if you only miss one every three ends or so. That would only be two in a game, bringing in somewhere around that 90% range, I could take that. Turn draw here for Ben Nishi. They come up a little short as well. You see, struggling a little bit with the draw weight here, just not quite having a feel for it yet. It's not a bad shot, but it's just not exactly what they were looking for. Lukovic now looking to 
remove at least one of these blue stones, saying there's about probably a foot of room between the two stones, maybe a little bit more than that. Not too much chance of a jam, I don't think, on the back one, although they may line up. So Don Heyer looks like this is a better throw. Did get it inside the line this time. Last one was a little bit on the outside of the line. It's a lot of weight. And there's the jam. So it was possible after. Just enough room between those two rocks that it didn't drag to the right, which I thought it might. Certainly Don, no, no problem throwing the weight for second stone Don Heyer, which is always nice. Particularly when you get up into the seniors and masters categories where guys just don't generally throw it quite as hard as they do when they're 20 years old. So Ben Nishi now with a good opportunity for BC here. If he could sneak another one around his corner guard. And yeah, Alberta would still have shot, but you'd have number two and number three. But again, just, just fighting this draw weight a little bit. This one looks a little heavy coming in. Don't really want to be at the back of the house. And you really don't want to be through the house. It's going to be pretty close to going through. Hangs on barely at the back of the 12 foot. So it counts, but BC squad, as I said, will stop saying it for a little while, maybe, but they are continuing to, to fight the draw weight a little bit here. Saturday morning at the Canadian Masters. Look which now will probably look to make the double on the shot, but at least make one. Nice hollering. It's gonna, as we said, as expected, getting a little louder out there, a little harder to hear. So, a little few more hand signals and whatnot coming on into the, into play here. Look which good hit and stay. Got everything going on here at the Crown Club. We even have a massage table set up this morning. Pretty cool. So Shimizu. Playing the same shot, this intern come around. Skip Keith Switzer saying, guys, we gotta we gotta work on this. We gotta keep making making these shots. We need to get two to get back in it. It's just a tough shot. It just sits there a long time. Does break hard at the end, but well, I should say it breaks hard. It breaks, but just doesn't really snap over as, as you'd like it to do if you're trying to come from behind in a game like this. So a very good shot, very good weight. It just doesn't curl quite far enough to, to provide uh, protection from the high guard. So look what you're saying. You can see about half. Not taking very much ice, but we're going to throw this fairly firm. Out of the hack. She didn't throw it as hard as I thought he'd throw it, but he actually threw a little wide, so all things considered, it should work out. And it does. Roll behind the rock at the top of the A foot. Great shot. PC probably now has to play some kind of a hit. Have to make sure that they can score. If nothing else, you have to score. So an upturn hit here. Try to hit this, maybe roll behind the corner guard, sit number two, and I think it would be number two. Mizzou now. Turn. This looks pretty good. Need the roll here. It's close, really close. Great shot. That's a terrific shot. My third, Victor Shimizu. It's totally guarded. Can't see any of it for Team Alberta, so they now have to look at. Going ahead and attempting to guard the shot stone and maybe steal one here. Good news for BC, anything not other than perfect, they should be able to get at that red stone. 
Bad news is if he does make it perfect, it might be tough to score. But down 3-0, you need a little something to go your way here. Walsh with it on its way. This one's all about line. Could be pretty much anywhere from the Wolfville Kentville logos to the top of the house, and it would be good. So the whole directional sweeping thing helps you on these shots. It's another reason why I don't like it. But it's a perfect guard. Absolutely perfect. So now the question is do you try to play the run back and make them both? Or do you just peel it off and hope that Jim Walsh can't put it back in that exact same spot? Or do you go through the hole, which is probably possible, and maybe has an option of peeling the guard if you don't make it. And you do have a catcher on the other side. I think that if you, um, if you go through there and hit a half a stone or a little less, you may end up getting caught on the other red one. You do that, you might even sit three. Probably not going to throw it hard enough to make that, but it's certainly hard enough to make the hit and roll sit too. So big shot here for Skip Switzer. An opportunity, albeit a very hard one. to curl, not going to make it. So unfortunately for Skip Switzer, couldn't quite find the hole. A little more weight than I was expecting him to throw for that shot, actually. it's. I, I thought he would probably go at that with just uh, maybe a board weight shot, maybe even only hack weight to make sure he gets the curl. That was good weight for trying to remove a guard. If you ever hit the guard, you're going to remove it with that weight, but I don't know if it was the best weight for trying to get through that hole. Anyway, got rid of one of the guards. Unfortunately, left a perfect guard still. And the opportunity for Alberta to remove shot number two. So BC in some trouble here in the third end of play at the 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters. In a game that BC probably doesn't have to win, but they might. Like I say, we have so many teams tied at the top of the heap potentially tied at the top that you really don't want to leave it to any kind of tiebreaker to let you know if you're in or out. I think, just have a look here. BC were to drop this game, they would be tied with Alberta, 7-3, so those two guys would be 7-3. Saskatchewan potentially wins on sheet one and Manitoba on sheet two. Yeah, you could end up with a real mess. Could still end up with about six teams tied with the same record. So not, not a game you want to lose. I think BC has beat most of the teams that are in the, in the game, in the game to, or the teams that would be tied with them, which could be very helpful. But this one's not over yet. Skip Switzer needs to make one good shot here, get the boys on the board, maybe get rid of that hammer for an end or two. Usually you want the hammer, but sometimes it's just not working with the hammer. So let's see if we can uh, make something happen without the hammer. Super hard shot, though. Not totally sure of the call. I don't know if he's just playing the draw here or if he's... Yeah, it looks like just a draw weight shot. going to be really hard to score here. I think it's... Uh, you got to draw around there and maybe bump that red one back. So I think you might be almost playing to give up a steal of one, which you really don't like to do when you're down already by three but there might be room come around that red playing a little rub now not gonna have enough speed for that I don't think good idea but Alberta will steal another one here and take a 4-0 lead after three ends of play at the 2016 
Kings County Canadian Masters in the beautiful Annapolis Valley. Encourage everybody to visit bellalliant.ca slash TV1 for the webcast and TV schedules as well as on-demand content. You can also get information on live events that are only available to Bell Alliant Fiber Op customers in Atlantic Canada. Bell Alliant, there's more to love with Fiber Op. What else do we have we need to tell you about here today? Kinds of stuff. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Kings County here in a little bit. In the Annapolis Valley, where right now it's about five degrees and not really super nice out, but in about a month, it's going to be an absolutely marvelous place to be. Yeah, let's get rid of tomorrow's snow. <laughs> It'll be even better. We're calling for a lot now. They're only calling for a little, so that's that's a good thing. BC with some work to do here as we approach the fourth end breakdown, four to nothing to Alberta. It's a fairly significant deficit. To be sure, definitely need to score a couple of points here. Be nice to get three, but since you don't have any yet, I would think you just settle for two would be good. Just a little more updating on the scores. We see Newfoundland stealing two in the third end in their game against Saskatchewan's Eugene Aritzik and taking a 3-2 lead. Uh, blank end on sheet two in the Nova Scotia Oh, yeah, blank end in Nova Scotia, Manitoba. So it's still a 3-2 lead for Nova Scotia in that one. And over on sheet four, no change. 2-0 lead for Team Montero over the squad from Quebec. Quebec had a good week here. We did their game yesterday, and um, they didn't have a good game yesterday, but they were cruising along and had a great week and just had a little trouble the last half of the game and faltered a little bit. But well, I'll tell you, if you want to see guys sweep... That is absolutely the best sweepers I've seen out here. So Alberta with the draw. Alberta won't be looking for any offense at this point. It'll really be all about defense. So they really won't play with too much out front. This one's a little heavy. It just rubs off the other one. Setting up a really, really nice pocket for Team BC. Certainly not a shot that they would love. I actually think I'd play this freeze now because it might disappear after. And right now, if you can get one in that pocket, it's going nowhere. Skip switcher with only about two feet of ice there. So obviously the ice has gotten definitely straighter. Lead Wayne Sato. Again, looks a little tiny bit heavy. Sweeper's really not doing much. You don't want to move too much here. You have a really nice pocket to work with, but if you move it around too much, all of a sudden it's not a pocket anymore. And you can see there, just that extra five, six feet of weight, and now it's very easy to remove for the Alberta squad, and you don't have that pocket to work with, so sometimes it's, uh, it's time you just got to make the right shot. We gave you the wrong score on sheet two. Manitoba actually scored one and tied that game up against Nova Scotia in, in the third end, 3-3. Three, three. Scoreboards are the other way here. They're not typical curling club scoreboards, which is fine and easier to read for the average person. Confuses us guys that have curled for a long time, sometimes. And that one's gone. Still lots of rocks there though. I tell you, Alberta wouldn't be real super happy about all those rocks at the back of the house. Coming around the corner guard now. Ben Nishi. The intern. He's not going around. They must be just playing to the back one. Cool by the broom positions in this game just because the ice is just not, not curling as much as it was earlier. And I'm, I keep thinking they're playing straight draws in, in the air. But that's a good rock for for a BC for sure. It's definitely removable, but now you have, as we said, you've got lots of red ones, lots of backing back there. They're all Alberta stones. They really shouldn't hurt you at the back of the house. If anything, it should actually provide some help 
as you try to claw your way back into this game. And higher with the delivery. As you say, Ben certainly shown he can throw the weight. Pretty beneficial on a shot like this. Shouldn't really be too difficult to remove. And sure enough, another successful shot by Ben Heyer. As the pom poms go wild up here in the crowd. It wasn't that hard a shot, I didn't think. But <laughs> it's a good result. Good result for Team Alberta as they roll on here with a 4 nothing lead. BC. BC now has to, um, really has to get it going. You know, they, they're they closer, the draw weight's getting better, but the game is marching on and they really do need to find their groove a little bit here and try to manufacture two in this end. Lots of rocks to work with, as we keep saying, lots of in the house and when you're the team behind, this is actually a good thing. You really don't, uh, you really don't want to remove too many of those stones. Even this one, it'd be nice if it would stop, and it does. We just take out on the way and we'll successfully remove the BC stone. A little bit of the straighter ice is kind of catching the guys. Find it a little bit harder to utilize those corner guards than it was earlier in the week. So um, you can still make it, it's just got to be perfect. Switcher's indicating he would like the corner guard, the draw around the corner guard rather, but. Also, I'm not unhappy with the freeze, and with two rocks there, it actually allows you to throw throw a little tiny bit more weight. And if you bump it, you're still going to stay frozen. Victor Shimizu now. Victor's got a real nice looking delivery. Boys are working hard on this one. I think he's okay for weight. Switching sweepers, trying to make it curl a little bit. Does need to get over there. Ouch, finds the hole. It's just nothing really going particularly right for the Gene BC right now. It was one that uh, guy swept a little bit down, probably didn't need it, but if you were going to sweep it, maybe just a one sweeper on the high side. Just not their morning so far. Maybe they get to the fourth end break and have a snack and chat and come back strong. Still got to finish this end though. You do need to. Find a way to make sure you score. Jim Walsh holding the barrel for Ed Lukwich. Draws you to the top of the eight foot. And lots of room still for Team BC. Guys are just trying to find a way to score. Having a little trouble with that. This 
one's coming in pretty nicely. You can just dig in a little bit. And unfortunately, Victor finds the exact same hole. It's just a little deep. I think Red's still shot. Victor was a field goal kicker. He would have made a lot of money in this end. He just kind of put two of them right between the Reds. That one was really close for weight. If that had just been about maybe four feet lighter for weight, would have been pretty darn good. So Lukowicz asking Jim Walsh just to come down to the rock that was just thrown. I think, anyways. And actually, a better spot probably would be the top of the four-footer. Just maybe even full eight-foot. You go to the back one, BC follows you down, and if you ever do something wrong in your last one, you might end up giving up a two somehow. But either way, everything going right right now for Alberta, not so much for BC. So Jim Walsh is with his first shot here in the fourth end. its way. Looks pretty good. It's a good shot. Yep. So BC probably can make the hit and roll behind the corner guard and be shot rocked, buried. Not, certainly not an easy shot, but one that's quite makeable, and really, to be honest, one that the boys are going to have to start to make here to get to get in this game. So, big shot for Skip Switzer. Learn a lot when you're doing this job, and one thing I just learned just now was that you can't leave a cup of coffee sit for 45 minutes and take a drink and expect it to be hot. So Switzer, with the delivery, out turn guys working hard. It's a tough call here. You need to make the roll, but you have to make sure you don't roll out. If he'll have enough weight to roll, he might be just going to have to settle for a, a tap. Let's make a roll. Good effort, really good try by Skip Switzer. Just a needed probably just a little bit more weight. Both for both reasons. One, a little more weight, he gets the roll, and a little more weight, he moves that red one back so it's uh, it's not shot rock. So right now, even if you ever going to miss out of out of Jim Walsh and probably a highly unlikely on a just pretty much open takeout. He would have to make a double on the Reds. I don't even know if he could score two actually. He might be able to come around tap it back. But a really difficult task to score two. So Alberta playing very well this morning. Tell you a little bit about the team when we come back from the break. Jim Walsh. Most of this Alberta team was actually at the Canadian Seniors last week as well in Digby. All but one. This one's got to curl a little bit. And here it comes. On higher. With, this, with the sweep. Try to make it curl a little and a good shot. So now, BC forced with a draw, full four foot, a little bit better than full four foot, just to score.
obviously a big shot here. If you don't make this one, the game's going to be pretty close to being over. Uh, need to bear down here. Make your one. Regroup at the break. Delivery. Not really any backing here. It just doesn't curl hard to count on that red one as backing. Wayne Sato. The broom. He's got to come off that guard. Got to come off that guard. And here it comes. Here it comes. There it goes. Now you got to go real hard. Real hard. And a great shot. Terrific sweeping by the front end for this Team BC. And a very good shot for Skip Keith Switzer. As BC gets on the board here in the fourth end with a single and I'll tra trail Team Alberta 4-1. to one. We'll take a short break here at the Canadian Masters and be back with you just in four or five minutes. Valley. The Annapolis Valley. Simply extraordinary. Visit NovaScotia.com slash The Annapolis Valley. Simply extraordinary. Premium grapes and the warm soil of the Annapolis Valley. We think it's the ultimate wine pairing. Visit NovaScotia.com slash Annapolis Valley. Visit NovaScotia.com slash Annapolis Valley. The Annapolis Valley. Simply extraordinary.
So we're back after the fourth end break here in our game between Team BC and Team Alberta. BC finally on the board here in the fourth end. Been a bit of a struggle so far for the guys from BC for sure, but they have a 7-2 record and they have that record for a reason, so I would expect them to claw their way back in this one and and make it a make it a much closer affair as we go on here. That won't be a good way to get it going though. You really need that one to stop short. He's sizing in the house. Update on the results from the other game. Or the other side of the draw rather, the women's side. And the hit for Alberta. You see the importance of the lead when the lead makes just one easy mistake or a little mistake at the start of a it totally changes the complexion for that end. And unfortunately for Wayne Sato, he slid his first one into the house. There's one out front. You see at that point in the game where you basically are going to take a few more chances and, and hope it works out. He's got the guard out there. ABC just just fighting the draw weight just a little bit today. They just haven't quite got the feel for for what the ice is doing and what the ice is running or how the ice is running as far as speed goes. Alberta, on the other hand, just not really having too much trouble at all right now. Doer, lefty for Alberta. But it might be the only team here with matching belts this week. I'm not sure. They got the big fluorescent belts on. Keep them from getting lost here in Kings County. They're used to the big city life. You can't really get lost in Kings County, so you're pretty good with just the standard belt. But I like those. So Nishi now, the outturn. BC desperate to get something going here. They just can't remember the time that they were sitting shot rock for more than one shot. This one's going to be on the guard. Second stone to Nishi. Ben Nishi, sorry. Not bad, though. It's a good spot. Don't want it to roll too far. That's good. So a couple of rocks out. Lukovic will go out and try to clean that up a little bit. Alberta really not... Not looking to have really anything in play at this point. They'd be pretty happy just to, to have nothing in play, actually. And there's the peel. Just slide the blue one in. Rock's going everywhere. As we mentioned yesterday, if you're a curler at home and you're a front-end player in particular, your job to catch the stones. It's hard sometimes to want to stop and watch what's going on, but you have a job to do. You have to make sure the other people on the other sheets remain safe as well and their games don't get disrupted, so be sure to catch those stones. You see now with a guard call. a little bit. He just needs to get to that center line. And this looks like a pretty good position. Very nicely done. So good shot there. Second stone Ben Nishi. Quick updates while we're look watching the team Alberta play the peel here. On sheet one. Saskatchewan took one in the end, tie that game up 3-3 with Newfoundland. Stevie Ogden from Nova Scotia played a hit and stick for two in the fourth end to take a 5-3 lead over Manitoba. And you see as, as he attempts to, to keep his playoff hopes alive. 
And on sheet four, Quebec did take one in the fourth end and now trail Ontario by a score of two to one. After four, with Ontario having a hammer in the fifth and Ontario in pretty good shape right now as I glance over there. So the peel made. You see now, not sure the call here. Shimizu. Just a little. Hmm. Working hard to get this one just over the line and won't make it. Uh, it's been a rough day for Team BC. I don't even actually understand that shot because I, I just I'm not quite sure where it was going to go. If it did get over, it's going to end up with a guard maybe on the red one. So I don't know. Anyways, Hogstone resulting in a little change of plans for Alberta, and then look which will go down to have a little discussion with Jim Walsh. But what they really want to do, Jim indicated maybe a little tap on the red. And I think Ed's probably thinking, well, I don't know, if we really want to do that. And since I've got like a whole lot at all kinds of level it'd be worth going down and have that conversation this is tough though tough to remove the blue one it's not a real easy hit so I'm not sure that you can do too much more maybe you can blast that thing through the hole and in the end of the day they might be going to play this little tap after all Ed Lukowicz, Jim Walsh holding the broom, playing just a little bump on the red one. And ice is definitely a lot straighter here. It's only about two feet of shot. And even Victor's last one that he did hog, it, it didn't curl radically. That's why I was confused by the, the ice call. I just thought it was going to end up in the wrong position. But. Sweepers aren't working on this one. Gord Dewar going. Don Heyer just watching. That's happened so often with the two, the one sweeper and the directional sweeping we see nowadays. Quite often one guy just is along for the ride. So a little tap, not really a, a very long tap. Certainly uh, an opportunity for BC if they like to remove. End up with shot rock. Not going to be a great shot rock, but right now that might be the best choice. Might even be able to make this and stay and, and sit two in the top 12 foot area. It's Victor Shimizu. This one on the way. This looks pretty good. Might need to curl a little bit actually. Very good shot, not quite enough weight to... thought they might play that a little bit firmer than that. I think you could have thrown that almost as hard as you wanted to actually and, and ended up with... Your, your rock was going nowhere, the shooter maybe goes somewhere if you don't hit enough of it. But I kind of think you had to, had to remove a rock or two on that. <laughs> Only two rocks to come for BC. And if... Um, if Alberta removes his stone, he'd be in some trouble. I don't know what the guys are talking about there. I keep hearing Ed say that one. At first he was asking if there was a double there, and he didn't like the particular double, but there's only two blue stones, so I'm not sure how many doubles there can be. going to play the single hit, the out turn hit on the the blue stone. On the left side of center as I look at it, probably the right side of center on the screen. Looks like he's got a good shot. Maybe he's a little worried about doubling something at the back, one of the red stones. So there for Lukowicz. He sees got a problem. No hammer here in the fifth end. Not really any guards that they can just say, well, let's ignore everything and go around and 
hopefully find a way to to maybe steal one. So I think we have either the hit and roll or a double call here. It's a quite a bit of ice for for a double. So I'm thinking it's a either a hit and roll off the red or maybe just a straight draw. Even actually, that would be a great shot if you could make that shot. Play the out turn, come around. Just go maybe to the back of the forefoot, catch some curl at the end. You see it there. If this rock coming from left to right on your screen, come by the blue one fairly tight. Slide in there, T-line or just even a little bit beyond the T-line would be a great shot for, for BC. Probably worth a go at this point in the game, actually. Team BC's called all the right shots. They just haven't they just haven't made all that many today. They're just struggling hard this morning. Not that I haven't made that many. They just haven't made the right ones. So this looks like the draw. Sweepers on it. Good sweepers. Solid sweepers for this team from BC. This one's curling hard, though. It's hopefully they can get a bye. And it might be a little light as well. So, unfortunately for BC, just came up light. Perfect line, really, and had it all figured out really well with just needed another six feet of weight. So Skip Key Switzer for Team BC is going to have to do uh, do something very special in his last one to s to keep the keep the squad in the game here. Unfortunately, they just just haven't been able to make a lot. But one good shot. You know, it's curling's a funny game. It doesn't take a lot sometimes to turn it right around. So I don't know how many games I played over the years where you felt like okay, total control, everybody's playing well, and you you miss a shot, and all of a sudden the roof caves in, and vice versa. Probably played a couple in my career that really had no business being in and all of a sudden just make one shot along comebacks on and things just turn turn right around well bird throwing the draw it's probably I think just top top eight foot on the side, probably good Good shot there by, by fourth thrower Jim Walls. <laughs> Boys from BC trying to signal timeout, and they've got it. Their timeout, and rooms are falling all over the place. So a lot of discussion on this one. There's not not a whole lot to work with for for the guys from BC, and there's a lot of Alberta Stones in the house. Skip Switzer trying to figure out how to get something in there. I actually think, in my opinion, that probably the intern draw around the, the far left hand red stone is about the only shot. You might squeeze it through the hole on the out turn, but I don't know that that's a, that's a small hole. Tough shot, that draw for sure, but I don't know, you might have to go there. There's not really a roll off the outside right one, the right hand red stone as you look at it. So I think he's going to have to play an intern draw. He might not be his favorite favorite choice, but I think you got to go there. Sure enough, that's what they will play. Victor Shimizu in the house, holding the broom and indicating to everybody. Obviously, Keith knows what he's playing, indicating to the sweepers what he's playing. And again, earlier on in the week, this certainly would have been a shot that you could plan on warping in there pretty, pretty good. I just don't know about the curl now. And Unfortunately for BC, it's a new part on the ice, but you know what? It's uh, Keith's been all around the draw weight today, just a little short last in on one shot, but 
had pretty good weight. Can never make. Might change this whole end around. Got it on the way. Nice slide. Sweeper's on it. Got to be really careful with this one. It's got to be perfect. Looks pretty good. Actually looks really good right now if the weight's good. It needs to curl though. Where is the curl? Wayne Sato trying to work it over there. Trying to get on the high side of that stone and make it, make it move in. She's too bad, you know. Perfect weight. Really, really. You can't throw much better than that for weight. Sweepers did all they could do to try to work it out towards the, the center of the sheet, but it just didn't curl. And instead of being buried behind the red one, he's basically at a Jim Walsh from fourth thrower for Alberta. Has a wide open hit for one, two, three, and if he stays, four. Pretty much nailed down a victory in this one with by making this shot. Fortunately for us, it might also end our broadcast, but that's okay. We'll see what happens. Remind everybody as well that we do not have semifinals this afternoon. Unfortunately, the games are not. There's no games being played on the sheets that we have covered here in Wolfville and Wolfville or at the Goose Guy Club and over at Wolfville. This looks pretty good by Jim Walsh. No surprise. Probably going to be a nose hit for four, and it is. Alberta picks up four. BC says that's. Alberta wins this one by a count of 8-1, to one, breaking a streak of three consecutive losses. They have to be happy about that, and they sure look strong in this game. It wasn't, uh, there wasn't really much doubt. BC sure didn't have their best effort, and they'll be a lot better in their next game, provided they make it, and I suspect they will. Um, but Alberta did look really good. Really, really good. The um, end result here, 8-1. to one, The 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters. Quick update before we go. Um, Newfoundland scored two to take a 5-3 lead in their game with Saskatchewan. For those in Nova Scotia, Steve Ogden leads 5-4, playing the six with Hammer. So Ogden to maybe win that one and work work himself into the playoffs. And Ontario with a 4-1 lead over Quebec. So that's it for now. I'm Jim Nix, and I will be back with you tomorrow morning for the bronze medal games being played here at the at the Blues Cap Club. Bye for now. Enjoy your day, and hope to see you tomorrow at the semis, or not the semis, but the bronze and gold medal games here at the. Kings County Canadian Masters.